So what I thought I would start with is the half square triangle. It's just like the most common component ever. Um, you have to know how to do the half square triangle. What I want to do is show you how and why. Because I think it's important to answer the why. So I have lots of quilt books. And I want to tell you, I'm going to show you something in this quilt book that drives me nuts, but it's a great book. It's an older book. Um, it's more quilts from, it was from a storybook, the Quilt Maker's Gift. So this is from my collection. But here's what used to happen and still happens in a lot of books and patterns. So you're looking at the pacing directions and they go, uh, you need to make 256, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry, here, 384 half square triangles. And you want to take this triangle and this triangle and put them together for 384 times. Shoot me now. Shoot me now. Dina is here with me and we're just like, shoot me now. And that is stopped a lot of quilters when they're like, oh my gosh, because why? What happens when you cut a triangle? Have you found this out yet? When you cut a triangle now, you have a bias. And when you have a bias, it is stretchy. And once you've stretched it and made that little rainbow, it's not going to unstretch. So if you're pulling it all on your fabric as you're pulling it through the machine, if you've not pinned and so you're just going to pull it through, you're going to stretch it just like that, and your triangles come out walk a doodle Your half square triangles, now you're trying to straighten that up and sew it, and it ends up, it's, you cannot get a straight diagonal to save your life. Is that not true? Yeah. You so, just put them in the garbage. That's the only all thing good you can for. do, when, once you have done that to a fabric, that's, Elmer Burns is too. Elmer Burns. Katie and I do that. We throw everything in the floor. But once you have stretched that, or once the half square triangle no longer matches up, and that's what happened to me when I was a new quilter. I was all the time not able to get my half square triangles with my diagonal straight right in the middle of my half square triangle because that was another thing. Then to straighten them up, you, you're trying to, to do all this jimmy. Eleanor Burns has the six and a half inch triangle square upper one. She also has a nine and a half an inch. And she also has, did you see the really big one though? There's a that's the only one I saw. Uh, and then she has a four and a half. I, I haven't bought that one yet, but I like it because you don't have to move the ruler to trim your dog ears. And see, I don't like slots. So it's just, I haven't tried it yet. So. Yeah, it's up to you. But this one is the new, there's two versions, one with little slots in it. I just don't know about that yet. So I can tell you, I don't know about that yet. But you know how you get used to something? <laughs> it's like you go to a restaurant, you always get... Whatever you always get. Kathy, Kathy and I go to the Thai place and we always get the two same dishes. Every exactly. Time and we're happy about it. And sometimes we try to make ourselves change. We're like, nah. So for me, the slots have not made it to my, I want to do that. But um, not saying they aren't good. Uh, so anyway, why do I like the six and a half? Because it fits nicely with my rotating mat at my sewing machine. And most, most, most of my half square triangles are within this range. Most. Um, every once in a while you'll have a bigger one, but it is rare. Now, I was asking, this is another kind of trim tool. It's Tucker Trimmer. And then Creative Grids has a trim tool. What the trim tool is, is to trim down something that is oversized. So instead of those triangles, instead of the old fashioned way, I don't do that. I do Eleanor Burns method. And here's how it is. For every two um, half square triangles, you need two pieces of fabric. And then you put them right sides together. You draw a diagonal. You draw a diagonal. And then you sew a quarter inch on either side. So this is a five inch block. I've sewn, uh, I drew a diagonal. I've sewn a quarter inch on each side. And then what you do is first, you're going to just take your ruler and you're going to cut on that line. Now, that gives me two of these components. And usually the old school way, you'd be trying to press those open and then square it. And you would be using your diagonal, trying to make sure you had it exactly squared. Nope. 
This, you keep it closed. Then you take this ruler. On one side, it is whole numbers. And on the other side, it is half numbers. And on the whole side, you also have eight markings. So you can go in between those whole numbers. I have a five inch. I want it to be a four and a half is the size I want. I'm going to put that four and a half right on my sewing line. And I'm going to trim here and here. Then I'm going to flip it, put it right back on that sewing line. And I'm going to trim off the dog ears. So you do that. So then I flip them over and I do this. Now, this is a great thing to binge watch. Skinwalker Ranch, <laughs> Dateline, A True Crime Story. Um, yeah, tonight I gotta watch the next episode so then, of Skinwalker. <laughs> so then, now it is exactly right. It's ready to go. You're gonna press it. I'll finger press it here. But you'll press it and it will be exactly right. And that will make two. I'll cut them down. That will make two. So when it asks for... 144, you can make 72, cut 72, because it's also less cutting, right? I have to just cut half as much, right? Well, what if you don't want to cut half as much? I'll show you how to cut less than that. But this is the math. Any pattern, say I have this book, I can figure out what size it tells me, and you should end up with a two and a half inch flying goose. Here's the math. And I suggest you take a picture of this and then you write it in your own handwriting because just writing it will, will seal it in. For a half square triangle, when it tells you what size it's going to be, you're going to add a half an inch. Is that finished size or cut size? That's, that's not finished sewn in, but that is not cut, cut, cut either. That is sewn together as a component. That's a component size versus finished. And that's the thing. Be careful. When they say finished, they mean sewn in, and that's a whole different thing. This is the component size. So um, so you need four and a half inch squares. Um, that you have squares. So if I need a four and a half inch half square, I'm going to cut a five inch squares. And each set of those five inch squares is going to make two half square triangles. Is that clear? So again... Um, and how, you might ask, how would I know? A lot of times they will tell you this should be this size when you finish. If they don't tell you, you can also look and see what it butts up to. This butts up to a regular square. See that half square triangle? Butts up to a regular square. I can look and see what size D was, and then I know what size to, to make it. Um, and D... D was two and a half inches. So I see that D that butts up to my half square triangle there is two and a half inches. So I know that needs to finish at two and a half inches as a component, not sewn in as a component. So I need a two and a half inch component. What I would do is add a half an inch and I would cut three inch squares. Okay. And that's going to make two flying geese per set of fabric. Now, what if I say, oh my God, it said 300 and some of them, and I'm about to have a heart attack, and even if I, even if I go half of 300 and some, I'm going to have so many more. Well, on her, and this all is also in the instructions with the ruler, you can make them in sets of eight. In sets of eight, you take a bigger square, and you make an X on your diagonals, and you sew a quarter inch on either side of that X. Then, when you go to cut it down, you are going to cut straight down the middle, not on the X, straight down the middle for vertically and horizontally, straight down the middle. I'm not so, I'm not, this is not the lines I drew. Whoops. Hard to do this upside down and backwards. All right, so now I have these components where they still are sewn where the X was. Then I am going to cut those in half on the line. Okay. 
and I will end up with eight half square triangles. And then I will um, trim them with the trim tool just as before. Now, I like Elner Burns trim tool, but all these trim tools do the same thing. And the thing about a trim tool, it's going to do the same thing regardless of how you got there. So no matter what way you got there, if you need to use a trim tool, anybody's trim tool will work. You just find the one you can read and that you're comfortable with. Okay, so now I have eight, eight, seven and a half, eight and three quarters, seven, three quarters, eight. Now I have eight, eight half square triangles from two pieces of fabric. I did not have to cut 300 whatevers. I have to instead cut like divided by four. So way less pieces. Now the math for that is this. To make eight half square triangles, you're going to have, add your half an inch to the half square size. Then you're going to multiply that by two. So if you need a four and a half inch square, half square unit, you're going to first add that half just like normal. And then you're going to multiply it by two. And that will give you the size to cut your squares. Let me show you though. In her, in her formulas, cut square to this, square up to that. Finished means sewed in. We don't usually talk about that when we're making components. So you want to kind of ignore that. You're talking about if I need a four inch um, half square triangle to butt up to another four inch thing, it, the component needs to be four inches, you need nine inches. This formula works and it is um, to make the big square. So all you have to have are these two formulas in any pattern that says a half square triangle, you can convert them from making triangles to making squares. And you know what, when it wants a bazillion of them, eight, eight at a time is just magical. So this is how I sew faster is because I use these kind of uh, techniques to make it easier. And the other thing is it makes me go faster in the cutting. I don't like to cut. So I love it when I can cut um, one for every eight, eight. Well, actually it's two and you would have cut 16 pieces and I cut two pieces um, and that I don't have to deal with bias. And I know that every time after I've trimmed them down, every time they're going to be perfect. I have never had to throw a half square triangle away again uh, once I started using the oversized and then trimmed down method. Um, so that's what I'll have to say about that. So um, again, the, the six and a half is here. I'll probably take this one on home with me. And I will tell you, I have worn these out um, only because I use them. Every time I make a half square triangle, I use them. So I have worn these out. I've not used my, I've not used my nine and a half near as much. And again, it's because this guy can just stay right at the sewing machine with me. And that's where it does stay. Uh, well, I hope you have a good day. I hope that helped you. If you're a new quilter, I'm telling you, if you do this method, um, half square triangles will never be a problem for you. And if you write down these two and post them somewhere, I would not put them in a notebook, you'll never find them. But post them somewhere where you can look um, and see the math. This math works on every, 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 every half square triangle. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.